It says, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread we, we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? I like that he calls communion the cup of blessing. Now, it's not the cup of blessing simply because we bless it. Notice, it's first a cup of blessing because it is God's blessing to us. And by blessing us, we return the favor and bless him with our words. So do you realize communion is a cup of blessing? God wants to pour blessing on you through the bread and the wine. But many of us, we, we just take communion without recognizing God is wanting to pour blessings on our lives. What kind of blessing? Anything that would be considered good is a blessing. But one particular blessing is, is health. Look at 1 Corinthians 11, the next, next chapter. Verse 29, he says this. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord, eats and drinks judgment on himself, that is why many among you are weak and sick. And a number of you have fallen asleep. See, one of the main and one of the greatest blessings of communion is good health and longevity. How many of y'all would like to have good health? How many of y'all would like to live a long, healthy life? He associates the fact that some people are not receiving the blessings of health because of a failure to appreciate what they're doing. And what are they not recognizing? They're not recognizing the body of Christ. They are not recognizing Christ's presence. Do you understand? When you take of the bread, drink of the cup, Christ is there with you. Do you recognize him though? Or do you just and take the bread and dip it in the cup and quickly eat and just recognize only the bread and the wine? Do some of you eat and think, oh, you know, the, I've tasted the bread. It used to be better. Oh, this is the best bread I've ever had yet. That's a good one. I wonder what grape juice they're using, what brand that is. I'm telling you, if that's what you're doing, no wonder why some have gotten sick. Because they didn't recognize the body of the Lord. They didn't recognize God was present with them in communion. He was with the elements of the bread and the wine. Now, that doesn't mean... That we believe that the bread and the wine have been transformed into the literal body and blood of Christ. Because if we believe that, that would make the, the elements divine. That would make the elements God themselves. And therefore, people would worship the bread and the wine. That's idolatry. We can never fall into idolatry. So while we don't believe that the bread and the wine transform to be the body and blood, we do believe God's presence is there with the communion. So he is there with us. And we have to recognize his body, his presence, when we take of the Lord's Supper. Go to Luke chapter 24. Here's a beautiful story that, that I think illustrates what I'm trying to say to you. Here in Luke chapter 24, let's start with verse 13. Luke 24, verse 13. This is right after Jesus was raised from the dead. This is Sunday morning or afternoon, probably in the afternoon. Uh, two disciples have already heard that Jesus rose from the dead. They heard it from some women, but they don't believe it. So here in verse 13, it says, Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. So they're going to take a seven-mile walk. Now, the distance is important, okay, because it's going to help us understand something, all right? It says, They were talking with each other about everything that had happened, as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. Jesus is there, he's present with them, but they don't recognize it's Jesus. They just see him as a common man. Now, the Bible doesn't say why they were kept from recognizing. It doesn't say God kept them from recognizing them. We don't know what kept them, but they were kept from recognizing. Something was happening where they couldn't see Jesus with them. He's present, but they don't see it. 
So what does Jesus do when he comes along? He asks them a few questions, and before he, we know it, he's given them a Bible study. Verse, let's jump down to verse 27. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. So he's given them a Bible study along the road. So let's assume for a moment he, he came and joined them early on in the walk. That would mean his Bible study would have been at least two, two and a half hours long. You say, how do you know that? Because if it's a seven mile walk, that's about how long it takes to walk seven miles. I know because I walk three miles three to four times a week. And it takes me about 50 minutes to do three miles. But I, I'm walking quite briskly because I'm not talking to anyone. But I know that if I was talking to someone, I'd kind of slow up and maybe even stop and ask them questions, right? So we know Jesus is doing this, and, and, and he's given a Bible study from Genesis to Malachi. He's taking them from the beginning to the end and giving them the word. And yet while he's teaching the word to them, they don't recognize him. Then they ask the Lord, why don't you stay with us? Have a meal with us. He pretended that he was going to go further, but he comes and joins them in their house. Now we come to verse 30. When he was at the table, this is when Jesus was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it. Wait, wait, wait. This is no ordinary meal. Who breaks? Bread. You understand? You, you just serve it. You eat it. But when he breaks it, he's showing that this bread and this wine is more than just a meal. Now watch this. When he, when he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. Notice, he did not disappear. He did not leave them. He only disappeared from their sight. But he was still there. Now, are you getting this? It's not until they come to the communion do they recognize the presence of Christ. Christ is here. He's with us all the time. There he is. Now, listen to me. Many of us are like these two disciples. For some reason, we are kept from recognizing Jesus in the bread and the wine. We just come and we just think we're having an ordinary meal. We, just, we know it's communion, but we don't really think anything significant. We don't really sense his presence. We don't recognize Jesus is there. And that's our problem. The key is to recognize that when you come to the table and take the bread, you recognize Jesus is present. When you dip it into the wine, he's with me. I'm not alone. He's here. That's our problem, though. We don't recognize him when we take communion. We recognize everything else around us. We smell the paint. We notice this person's here that we hadn't seen for a while. We recognize him. Oh, look, look who's here. Hey, hi. But then you take the bread, dip it. Hi. Ah. Do, do, do you see what I'm saying? Is you're not recognizing Christ is there with the bread and the wine. And in communion. He's with us. That's why it's a sacrament. And, he, and you say, well, all right, if, if I can recognize he's with me, what would that do for me? It's real simple. He would bless you in any way that Jesus knows how to bless. See, if you recognize he's there, then what can he do for you? You know what he can do? In the Gospels, he forgave prostitutes and thieves and drunkards. So you know what I know? That if I can recognize Jesus, he can forgive me too. And, and if I recognize Jesus, then he could heal me. Because I know he healed many people with various diseases. So even though I have a disease and an infirmity, if I recognize him and touch the bread of the wine, he'll heal me too. Yeah. 